Once you've got this, it has to cause the defendant to not know either the nature and quality of the act, so things which they don't understand what's going on, like blackouts for example, or they understand what they're doing, but don't understand that it's legally wrong. So contrast that with the case of Window, in which he said he was going to be hanged for what he did, so he knew what he was doing was wrong, so couldn't use insanity. Either way, if we've got both of them, then you're not guilty by reason of insanity, which has a special verdict uh, of not guilty by reason of insanity. And the outcomes under Section 3 of the Criminal Procedure, Insanity and Unfitness to Plead Act, means you would receive a hospitalisation order, guardianship order, supervision and treatment order, or absolute discharge. So the next offence we're going to look at is automatism or non-insane automatism. Automatism come from the case of Bratty and the Attorney General for Northern Ireland. And what needs to happen is, at first, there's a total loss of control. So, in essence, the act is involuntary because there is no control from the mind over the body. That's as an automaton might do, for example. Now, this must then be caused by an external factor. And an external factor means, as in the case of Hill and Baxter, the idea of the overdetector of the swarm of bees as a non-human agency. But it can be anything. It can be sleepwalking. It can be... A bump to the head, concussion, those types of things. Now the important thing is it's not self-induced as well. So if you look to cases with diabetes, for example, if you fail to take insulin, then obviously that, that is or insanity. But if you take insulin and deliberately don't eat, then that might be considered to be self-induced. Or if you take anything which is an external factor, you know the effect it has on you, then it's likely to be a self-induced. So therefore, would not make a successful defence. But if there is a successful defence, of course, it's a not guilty verdict. The next defence we're going to look at is intoxication. Now, intoxication is through drug, drink or drugs. And then, of course, what we need is, the first thing is evidence of intoxication. So this means that they're unable or incapable of forming the mens rea for a crime. This defence behaves differently depending on the type of offence and the way in which the person became intoxicated. So if we begin with basic intent offences, so these are things like assault, battery, ABH, unlawful at manslaughter and so on, then it depends if they're voluntarily or involuntarily intoxicated. Now if they're voluntarily intoxicated, which means they know the effect a drug has on them or they've deliberately taken a substance, then the defence cannot be used because becoming intoxicated to this extent where you cannot form menswear is deemed to be a reckless course of conduct. If, however, the defendant is involuntarily intoxicated, now this is where they don't understand what might happen to them, or somebody slips something in a drink, for example, they don't know the effect the drug can have on them, then the defence can be used if they're incapable of forming the mens rea. But if there's some form of drunken intent during a crime, then of course that would undermine the defence. For specific intent offences, so this is things like murder uh, and sex 18 GBH, and then of course again it behaves differently dependent on the type of intoxication. Now voluntary intoxication, again, we know the effect it has on you or you deliberately drink or do drugs, then the defence can be used if the defendant is incapable of forming the mens rea. The problem with that is there's likely to be instead a fallback offence for most non-fatal offences. So you can follow this red line and you go back to basic intent offences. So what we mean by that is section 18 offence, the fallback will be section 20. For murder, the fallback will be manslaughter. And so although there's no mens rea for murder, there is recklessness and you may be guilty of a fallback offence. We then have specific intent offences and involuntary intoxication 
Again, this behaves in the same way, so the defence can be used if the defendant is capable of forming the mens rea of a crime. But, if at any point during the crime they can commit the mens rea or form the mens rea, then they can still be guilty. That would be drunken intent. One more thing to consider is the idea of Dutch courage. So if somebody comes, gets drunk in order to do a crime, then they have formed the mens rea and they will not be able to use the defence.